so there's this book, Kubla Khan, by Nick Bantock. And this is his dome. And I think it's a really great dome. David Hawcock has done a really fantastic job on this one. He's made the full thing. This is The Earth in Three Dimensions, with paper engineering by David Hawcock. And that is a really magnificent globe. And you can see each of these segments, they have these sort of teeth or flaps or something that interlock and go into the next segment that hold it all together. I'll make something approaching one of these. So here's one I made years ago when I was playing around with the subject. Quite nice, it all fits together quite snugly, but when you look at it on top, it's actually sort of elongated. It's really, really difficult working out the angles between the pieces. So if you look at David Hawcock's one, you'll see that these aren't actually straight lines. He's actually really tailored it so that the rectangles, everyone is just slightly different. So it does accommodate the curve, but accommodating the curve is really difficult. I had all sorts of experiments trying to do it. This one seemed pretty good, but you can see there are gaps between each section. I'll show you the nearest approximation to it that I could manage. Here are the pieces. Um, this is the shape of the piece you end up with. You'll have two of these, there's three arms each. Each segment, these flaps that stick out, that go, will go under the segment on the other side flap. You don't actually crease the scored lines on the flaps, but it's good to crease the scored lines on the, the panels themselves. You will need two of these. One I cut out. One I, I've drawn it up so you can see how it works. I've got one that I'm about to finish drawing up. This one I've cut it all out except these last pieces so I can just see what it looks like before it's cut out. I can just lift the, this out and I'll glue it all together in a minute. This is the second piece. I'll just crease the uh, horizontal lines just really quickly just so it bends into more of a curve and then I can show you how to construct the, the whole thing. So that's two of those. You start with nine arcs one and a half centimeters apart. So you draw the baseline, mark the middle point, Get your compass, you set it on one and a half centimetres, put it in that mark and draw the first arc. Then you move it up another one and a half, so that will be at three, then four and a half, six and so on. So you do nine of these arcs that are all one and a half centimetres apart. Next you'll need a, a protractor. And so the first angle that I measured. If you look at these, on the edges, it's just a smooth line. The first angle I did, you put the baseline of the protractor along your baseline. You put the center of it on the point where your compass was. And then the first one I did was 12 degrees. So that's 12 degrees. And the next point I did was another 25 degrees. So that takes you to 37. So that's there. And now we can just rule those lines. The other thing you need to work out is which is the middle. This is the arc. That's one, two, three, four, five. So this is the middle line. Then you draw from the center. This is the mark that was 12 degrees. And then you draw this one. This was the extra 25 degrees. So from the baseline, that was 37 degrees. So you draw that in. Now you can either take the protractor, you know, and put it there and go on measuring 25, 25, 25 all the way around. Or it's easier just to take your compass, measure that distance on that line and just mark it off five times. So 
So these will be, you know, the first one will be an arm, then a gap, then an arm, then a gap, then an arm. And now again, you can just rule from those to the center. And now you need the, the other pointy end. So again, it's get your compass, put the point on that center point and measure this distance out to the middle line. So it's actually the fifth arc. I think it's seven and a half centimeters. Anyway, having measured, the, got that distance, you then put it on that point and draw a little arc there. And then you do it on the other side, on the next point and draw that there. So that will be the tip of your arm. And then on the second arm, you do the same again. And then on the third arm, you do the same again. And so from each of those points, you now connect these to, to those points like this. You will then need to score. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to show you score between the, where those straight lines cross the arcs. So you score those, all of those lines. Uh, the one exception is actually here on this one. This is going to be what is your straight edge. You've come up 12 degrees. Well, start from this point and just take it. This is going to be the tab that sticks it to the page. So you go from there to that corner where the tab is. That's the only one that's different. And in that case, yeah, you'll score across just to that other point. So you score all of these. And you do the same, you know, on all the others, just scoring between where the straight lines cross the arcs. So I'm not going to cut this out. I'm not going to do that. Just, just to show you. Then you need to put on these tabs. When it's all stuck together, they're going to interlock like that. So you need to draw those on. Starting from the right hand side, there's none on this side. That's going to be against the page. On the opposite side of it, this, you count up one, two, and then you draw in a, where there's going to be a tab. And then you go, you leave a gap and you go one, leave a gap, two, and then opposite, there'll be one here, one here, it's gonna go under there, one here, one, two, three, one, two, three, yeah, so you, you can see on this, the, the top three, there aren't any, because you're gonna have a tab here, opposite those, those two, you have one in there, gap, one in there, there's one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. Each side of each arm has three tabs, except this side, which has no tabs. And when you come to cutting out, don't cut where these tabs are. Don't cut right to that score line. Cut just a fraction inside it so that they can accommodate each other. The other place you need to score is along where the tab is going to go. It's this line here. One more thing I forgot is in between the arms, you will need a tab in each of these places. So these tabs are where the ends of the opposing arms will stick onto. So if you look at these pieces, you can see you've got these three tabs that the opposing arms will stick onto. Maybe this time I'll try sticking them with the score lines on the inside. So we'll get a nice plain looking dome. So take that and this one, this will go like this. It goes, you put the tab underneath. So you see how it, you have to interlock it it's all extremely 
fiddly. I might have done best to start by sticking the very end of the arm into place so that it's got a sort of anchor point. Right. So that's stuck there. The very ends of the arms are the only bits that actually stick, apart from when you stick it to the page. And then this is going to go over, one, two, three, four. That's going to go over, so this is going to go like this, like this, like this. You can see it's snagging there. It doesn't quite want to go, so I might just have to take a piece of this one off. Maybe I should stick the other, the other end. Stick this end onto that. that that's going to stick onto that one. And that one's going to stick onto that one. It's not quite happy on those those joints, so maybe I need to cut a bit more of those flaps away. This is what I was saying about not cutting right up to the fold lines. So I think I obviously got too close to those fold lines, so then it, it doesn't want to work. See if that's better now. Uh, more or less. I think some of these are too long. I don't know if you can see it there. Awkward. Let's just cut chunks off if possible. That seems a bit better there. Now what's happening? Stick that one down. And the last two arms. I'll stick that one on there. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Is this painful to watch? <laughs> it's painful to do, I'll tell you that. <laughs> There we are, not too bad. And that goes under there. That goes under there. I'm going to chop some of that off. I'm sure that's not helpful. Let's just glue that last piece. These measurements are 25 degrees. I think before I tried using 22 degrees, but I just can't work out the actual geometry. So I think I think this needs needs trimming off a bit actually. So I'm just going to cut a bit off there. Let's see if that will stick down better. Maybe the 12 degrees was wrong. I think other ones I've done 10 and 11. Maybe even a little bit more off there. All fold flat. Yeah, I think a bit more off this one still, actually. And here we go. Uh, four and a half centimeters from the spine. And you just need to stick one side down, fold it over, and you put the glue on the tab like that. And stick it down like that. So there's the four and a half centimeter mark. Glue it down. 
and then you should be able to fold it shut and put glue on the other side. And now it should find its own place. I think those angles could still be jiggled with a bit. I mean, I've done them all 25, maybe 22. Or maybe you have to do like David Hawcock had done and just adjust each level of panels. They're just ever so slightly different. Because if you look at this one I did, it's quite nice. But when you, well, actually that's not too bad. But you can see there are, when it's flattened out like that, there are gaps at the bottom. And, but you know, but it's fitting nicely at the top, so it is a really tricky one. And well, that's the best I can do for the time being. So that is domes and globes. Thank you very much.